So we have a viewer request today. Uh, this little bottle here is a bottle of seaweed and aeons and digging and fire. And you're probably sitting there thinking, John, you've, you, you've already done that one. D don't you remember? Are, are you okay? And the answer is, well, you know, we, we know what the answer is, but um, you are correct. I have done seaweed and aeons and digging and fire. I've done their 40% version. But that's, this isn't that. Much like Lefroy and some other Isla whiskies, um, Atom Labs, which is just the moniker for Master of Malt's Spirits Division, or one of them anyway, um, decide to release a cask strength. And there's little sample bottles because they've started releasing some of their stuff in samples. Thank God. Um, the last Atom Labs thing we tried was the Bourbon Bourbon, which was bourbon infused with bourbon biscuits. And it wasn't great. You can check that review somewhere there. We do fun stuff on this channel sometimes. Um, so I'm looking forward to this a, little, a fair bit more uh, because I... Do you know, I should take these off, shouldn't I? Uh, I forgot I was wearing them actually because it reflects off of that, so I'm gonna just, yeah. I was gonna make more effort with this video in terms of like, um, you know, I was gonna do my hair and stuff because it's been a while since this got cut. And I looked in the mirror and I was like, it's fine, you just look like one of the Beatles, run with it. If I mean, if you wanted a good looking whisker reviewer, I mean, have you checked out Malt Box at all? Seaweed and Aeons are digging in fire. Ten year old cask strength, single malt scotch whiskey, 57.5%. A little bit odd that I'm trying this before the Lefroy cast strength, really, because I mean, I've had my eye on that one for a very long time. Into the glass you go. Good whiskey. We're going to be putting a bit of water in this as well, don't you worry. Don't you worry. This is a. Uh, this could be a fun one, otherwise. Oh, it was a really big, like, rolling tobacco edge. I've never smoked myself, but I mean, I've, I've been around people that smoke um, as a student, and obviously when you're a student, everyone's skin, so everyone gets rolling tobacco, so it's reminding me of that smell. And you always find it on the kitchen table, and you're just like, oh, for God's sake, you know, and I mean, I'm, I'm as untidy, just in different ways, you know, rolling tobacco, ugh. I might have a lot of rancid plates in the sink, but rolling tobacco, yeah, there's an element of um, wet rubber in there as well. Kind of like if someone took off a diving suit and they just like left it on a bench for a couple of days. I've no frame of reference for that. I don't really know why that's. Also, our diving suits aren't rubber now, are they? They'll be they'll be like some kind of silicon composite or something. They'll have like interweaving carbon fiber, fucking. Mega silicon polymorphic bloody son of a bitch fucking CNA bastard Marks and Spencer's waterproof wool fucking bloody biomimetic fucking polyps. I don't know. There's a little bit of ginger in there as well, actually, like a candied ginger, not a fresh ginger. Sweet and a little bit fiery. There's a what is that? There's almost like a very faint, kind of like, tawny port kind of a character to it. There's no port cask influence or anything like that, I'm not saying that there is, it's just it's vaguely reminding me a little bit of the the initial smell you get from port. Like lashings of tobacco though, there's just loads of just cigarette about it. A little bit of old library book in there. It's quite closed off on the nose, it's quite... It doesn't want to tell you too much about itself, you know? Hmm. Okay. We're going to see what it's like um, to drink. Whew. Oh, hello. <sighs> okay. There's a strong peanut flavour. Um, kind of like licking a freshly varnished coffee table. More peanuts. A lot of peanut. You know, I think we went down this road before with the seaweed aeons and digging in fire, actually. If, if, was that the really nutty one? There was, a, there was an Isla whiskey that I had where I was just, like, overwhelmed with nuts in my face. Speaking of innuendos, it is thick. There's a lot of, like, um, sea salt licorice kind of an element to it. It's quite briny. It's got a maritime, coastal, salty, sea salt, like you ate a sea, like you plucked a seagull out of the air and just bit into it. 
we've all been in lockdown for like the last year. Let's not pretend it's not the kind of thing that we would do if you were like, would you like a day out at the beach? It's going to be interesting readjusting to society. What is a fork? Most of the social mannerisms that I had before lockdown started have long since gone. I drink tea straight out of the kettle now. I haven't used a knife or a fork in years. I just eat Weetabix straight out of my hand, just like, and then just pour the milk in my face. And yeah, that's, that's just how I roll now. This is quite nice. It's quite closed off. It's not giving me much in terms of flavor. It's It's... It's quite spicy. There's a little bit of cinnamon in there. Um, there's loads of peanut. The smoke is a little bit subdued. Um, it's pleasant enough, but it feels like it's hiding. You know? It's kind of like stage one Zarbon, and we want stage two Zarbon. We want the real monster. So we're going to try and tease it out. Now then. Oh no. Right, I've stuck a small amount of water in that because I'm not quite sure how this is going to react. I mean, it's a healthy ABV, so I'd imagine it can stand up to it. But we can always add and we cannot take away. The nose now, it's reminding me a lot of Arbeg 10. That kind of like knackered rubber smell that I was getting. The tobacco's gone away and in its place, It's like burning tar. It's a very um, petrochemical smell. A bit of like rotting rubber. Quite coastal, like an old tarry rope. A bit of like bitter marmalade in there. There's like a super bitter citrusy edge to it. Almost like a little bit of like wet clothes that have been left out for too long. That kind of like slightly fusty aroma they start to get, which says, you should probably wash these again. Interesting. The peanut's still front and center. There is a little bit of a salinity to it, but it's a bit more subdued. It's got more kind of like a salted caramel rather than a salted licorice now. A lot of that like slightly uh, aggressive aniseed flavor has gone away and in its place it's become much more mellow and subdued and sweet. There's not really a whole lot of, in the way of smoke. It's definitely not as peaty as like say, well, even the first seaweed in Aeons, that was a really rich peaty whiskey. This one isn't, this was a much more, the peat's there certainly, but it's it's more of a, a whisper. Well, no, it's like, it's like a raised whisper, like, you know, a kind of like a, oi, oi, Greg, Gregory. That's that kind of a, you know. Still plenty of nut. Um, I'm getting a little bit like, uh, if anyone's ever had um, generic sunflower spread. There's plenty of them available, um, of which I would imagine most, um, most people's parents probably called it margarine, despite the fact that margarine is actually an independent product from sunflower oil spreads. But fun fact, I didn't know that growing up. It was only afterwards I was like, Oh, margarine's its own thing that you can't really get your hands on because it's really not fashionable. There's a slightly beery component to it as well. Almost like a quite clean pilsner on the finish. It's bizarre, but it's got this kind of like a interesting clean malt flavour to it. Again, the smoke is more kind of like a... It's almost like if you tried to smoke spices as like part of a curry mix before you made a curry with it, you were like, you know what, let's stick this in the smoker and see what happens. And the results maybe weren't quite what you were expecting. And the spice is still there. It's still very clove, aniseed, cinnamon. And there's just like a little bit of smoke to complement it. And it goes along with it, but the spice is still kind of like the forefront. That's the best way I can think to explain this one. It's spicy and nutty, a little bit tarry. The actual smoke is quite, Quite a background character, which is not what I was expecting going into this. I won't lie, I'm a little bit disappointed. A little bit let down on this one. Um, as always, my scores will be down below in the spreadsheets. 
Feel free to check those out to see what score this has gotten and all the other whiskies that I've ranked in the past as well. Um, this is fascinating. Um, a lot of these samples and bottles that are going to be coming up as well um, are made possible because I have a Patreon. Um, and I'm very grateful to uh, my patrons and also my channel members as well. They all contribute a little bit of money to me each month so that I can carry on to tart about in front of a camera and drink alcohol. It's 11. And if you feel that you want to be generous and help support my endeavours, then there'll be links down below where you can help out the channel as well. Uh, for now, though, I will say thank you very much for watching, and do join me next time where I'll be drinking something else. Mm -hmm.